Hey there, I'm Diana and I am Scrappy Warrior Woman. In today's video, I am going to talk about how I crochet blankets. And there are a lot of things that go into making a blanket, deciding on which colors to use, style of blanket that you're looking for, easy, hard, long, short, all those things. So for my color choices, I often go to Pinterest. Now, if I start with one color, like say for this last blanket I'm using, and I'll demonstrate today, browns. So I went, okay, what goes with browns or what goes with the hue of brown? Because the person that I'm making the blanket for likes browns. Now, I don't personally like that, so this was a bit of a struggle. So the Pinterest search really helped out a bunch. And it also helped me use up my stash. Remember how I talked about, I would keep talking about using up my stash. I was able to find colors that went together in a blanket. So Pinterest for color theory or color choices are very, is very good. So you can say what colors go with brown, what colors go with blue, what colors go with pink. And it'll give you a beautiful arrangement of colors. And when I'm making a blanket, again, I will look through Pinterest to see if anything grabs my eye. Now I have been using Pinterest for a really long time. So I have my own pins that I go through and I'm like, okay, that one speaks to me this time. I want to try something new. My very most favorite go-to every time websites is Daisy Farm Crafts. I've talked about them before. They are fantastic for many different things, but they have a lot of blankets already done in patterns and mostly as baby blankets, but can be converted into larger blankets like throws. So I usually do baby blanket throw sizes. So what else I like about Daisy Farm Crafts is that they also teach you how to do different stitches. I am going to go ahead and link them below in my very beginning of crocheting. And a super funny thing, I had no idea where they were located. And one day I was in the gym and I look over and I see one of the daughters that's usually one of the models that, that um, she uses. And she walked into our class to grab something and I, you know, kind of stepped toward her and, and I, I said, Hey, are you related to, um, Daisy farm crafts? And she smiled and she says, yes, that's my mom. And so that was super fun to make that connection. She thought it was pretty funny that I recognized her off of, off of social media. So, and it made me feel good. I'm like, Oh, they're local to me in Arizona. That was awesome. Having a plan for a blanket you need to know what size blanket that you are going to be making. If you're making a baby blanket size, that can vary in, in sizes. So for the measurement of blankets, I found a couple of graphs that have really helped me to know what size blanket I am looking for. You're looking for baby blankets. The lovey size is 12 by 12. A security baby blanket is Toddler 42 by 52, Swaddler is 48 by 48. Now, if you're looking for a child size, I have usually only gone to like a large throw. So for this one, a lap, lapkin is 40 inches by 48, small throw is 52 by 60, and a large throw is 60 by 72. Now, go ahead and include the two uh, size charts that I use that helped me to figure out what size blanket I should be, that I want to make. Also and it depends on how much yarn I have because again, trying to use up my stash. With the sizing information, this is great. This will help you to know how many chains that you are going to make in your blanket. So with patterns, all of that information is already done, but if you're doing it from scratch, like I did this last blanket that I'll share in a moment, I needed to chain a certain amount of chains in it so that I could get the length, the long length that I wanted. And so what I did is I just chained and I chained out till the number that I needed. If you're looking at a blanket and the, the, the stitches aren't so close together, that one's probably gonna take you a little bit longer than the ones that are got their things spaced out. So something to consider there. My blankets, I always have a blanket going, it seems like. So these can take me weeks, days, 
or even months, depending on how much time I have to crochet and how many other things have pulled my attention away. Like I said, I always have something going. So this year, it's my temperature blanket. I will set a link here so that you can see what a temperature blanket is. I didn't know what one was until last year. Video that I am going to link in there will, um, it has the description of what actually is a temperature blanket and how I decided to go about doing mine this year. Projects that I'm working on right now, I'm actually working on two different ones for special people in our lives that are getting married, some of my kids' best friends, and I thought, you know, extra love goes into the blankets, and so I'm gonna spend the time and the effort to give them something different that you can't just really get at a store. It's made with love and by my hands, and I know that they'll appreciate them. I also wanted to challenge myself with a new stitch which I'm going to demonstrate today. But I also wanted something that was super simple, that packed a punch, that wouldn't take me a long time to do. So I was searching through Pinterest and I found a stitch called the Iris Stitch. With my blanket that I'm making, I decided to go to a larger hook. Now with a larger hook, the drape of your blanket is going to be different so it's not going to be as tight it's going to be more flowy so when they call you know when when a pattern says the drape that means how it lays down or flows this blanket that i am currently working on this is what it looks like the yarn that i'm using is karen simply soft now this person like i said loves the color brown and i have all these things in my stash but guess what i have to go get at least one more skein of each of these of yarn, except this color right here because I had a, an abundance of it. But I'll be able to use it all up in this blanket just because of the size that I am making. When you use a larger hook making a blanket, your stitches will be larger. And so that will create a little bit more space and not technically use as much yarn uh, to get the dimensions that you want. Now, if you wanted to use that with a smaller yarn, it's gonna pack the yarn a little bit tighter. So something to consider there. But if you're a beginner, I would definitely follow the instructions. In most patterns, they say to use a swatch. I'll be honest, I have never made a swatch because I didn't wanna waste my time. I wanted to just get into my project. But if you're not using the exact same yarn as what the, the uh, I was gonna call it a recipe, the pattern calls for, it may be a good idea to do a swatch. And if you don't wanna do a swatch, that's totally okay. When you're looking at your yarn, it's really good to look at the packaging and see what type of, so this one is a medium four yarn. If the pattern calls for a medium yarn, you could, you could swap them out if you don't have the yarn that the pattern calls for. And if you are don't know how to read patterns, I also have a video for that that I will link below. But reading that yarn label is super helpful and then you can know which yarns are equal to other yarns. I'm gonna demonstrate the stitch that I'm using. It's called the iris stitch. So you chain your length that you need, counting your chains, and those be multiples of four. And when you get to the end of that, you add three and then you begin your iris stitch. So I'm going, I'm going to chain 199. Now that I have my 199 or your multiples of four plus three chained out, I am going to do two double crochets, a chain one, and then two double crochets. And I am going to do that in the fifth chain from the hook, which is one, two, three, four, five. So here we go. Two, double crochet, chain one, two, double crochet. No chaining after that. So now I'm going to skip the next three chains. So one, two, three. So in the fourth one, I'm going to do two double crochet. Chain one, two double crochet. And I'm just gonna keep doing that 
across the bottom of my work. So one, two, three. And what's going to happen is that when you get to the end, I will demonstrate that next with the other blanket that is multiple colors, you're going to chain three. So what's cool about this stitch is that you're not going to miscalculate your next rows because you're going to just do those stitches right on top of the other. So when I, after my chain three, I'm gonna be working in this space. And I'll demonstrate that in the next video. What I'm gonna do, it's the same pattern. And I like this because you're not gonna lose track of your stitches. So you yarn over, we're gonna do two double crochets and then a chain one. So your stitch. You'll just keep doing this until you hit the end of the row. I like how this blanket ends because this, the sides are very even. And you're going to just double crochet into that. Okay, so there's that's the finished row. And now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn work. And do the same pattern all the way back. So it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet is the iris stitch. This is the tip that I use when I need to connect to skeins of yarn in my work. So I will take it and cross it like that. And then I'll cross it again. I'll do it like, I'll wrap it around the other piece of yarn, like probably four or five times. This, this piece, and then this piece and tie a knot. And pull together, cinch it down and pull it tight like this. And then I'm gonna trim this piece right here and then I will be good to go to continue sewing on. And one more thing, these stitch markers, the stitch marker is a lifesaver. So your blanket doesn't pull out, you just slip it in there. And if you don't have a stitch marker, you can always use a safety pin or even a paper clip. But there you go, now my work won't pull out. Now, one thing to remember when you are making blankets, different yarns are going to work differently. So if you are using, like I'm using acrylic yarn, which is very uh, pliable, um, and it's gonna have some beautiful drape, it's gonna sit different than if you did 100% cotton. 100% cotton doesn't seem to be as soft. Some, some of the cottons are, but most cottons are stiff. So that's something to consider. Now, if you did a blend of, of cotton and acrylic, those are really nice. I really like the Baby Softy. Uh, that's a Bernat brand. Those, I've made blankets from those. But for this blanket, it is my go-to, which is Karen Simply Soft. I am gonna continue to work the blanket with the four rows. And I have figured out that the measurement that I want, because this is gonna be 70, 60 by 72, because it's gonna be a throw size, that I each section, this section, with all the yarn measures about 15 inches. I am going to make, so I'm gonna make four sections of the colors because that runs 15. So 15 times four is 60. Look at me doing math. My math teachers would be so happy right now that I'm using math in everyday life. So I hope you found today's video helpful if you are trying to create a blanket. I highly recommend you do some research on simple blankets at first and then working your way up to the more advanced and daisy farm crafts is a really good website that has fantastic free patterns beginning and intermediate and advanced on daisy farm crafts and their patterns are so easy to follow and i just highly recommend you check out their channel and you also check out their website
If you'd like to see more content like today, please consider liking and subscribing as I, this actually helps my channel to grow and find other crocheters just like you. And if you want to follow what I do during the week, I do have an Instagram account where I share what I'm making and we go to go get the yarn. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. My favorite section of Joanne is the yarn. Of course, maybe it's yours too. Let's see. Let's go find what I need. Okay. Here it is. I need one of these. I need, let's see. Where's the chocolate? I don't see the chocolate. It's probably on a different row. There it is. And I need a cream. There we go. Here we go. Happy crochet. And if you're a beginner, beginner, my pattern, or the, my, I am looking to, so what's the word I'm looking for? The.